So we'll conclude um, our discussion with zeros of polynomials for now um, with um, a brief talk of the factor theorem. Um, I've said many times in these past videos that when you set something equal to zero and you solve it for x, you always want to try just to factor in its easiest form. Um, but as you saw in the last example uh, that you worked, um, even when you use synthetic division, um, that's just a fancy way of being able to factor something. Um, so to transition into the factor theorem, I want to start by looking at this simple example here. Uh, and if I tell you to find all real and imaginary zeros, we would go ahead and set it equal to zero. Um, and in this case, being quadratic, we certainly wouldn't use synthetic division. Um, we'll go ahead and this actually factors um, into x plus 2 and x minus 1. Now, continuing on uh, formally, uh, we would take each factor and set it equal to 0, knowing it would be a solution. And we would find out that x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. So, what this really has just told us is that every 0 comes from a factor. So x equals negative 2 came from a factor x plus 2. x equals 1 came from a factor x minus 1. So that's where the factor theorem comes from. The factor theorem says that if x equals a is a 0, then x minus a is a factor. And, and we touched briefly upon that in one of the first examples we worked in this, in this section where um, the first question was try x equals 3, determine if it's a 0. Um, and then when we used um, a, a polynomial long division, I just threw up an x minus 3. Um, well, that's why. We were using the factor x minus 3 when we were trying to determine if x equal 3 was a 0. So um, one of the types of problems that will work here uh, is to find a polynomial with integer coefficients that has zeros uh, 1 half and 1 plus i. So these are going to be the zeros, and we know these come with factors. But now, before I can continue um, working essentially this problem backwards, uh, I also need to mention another theorem. The conjugate pairs theorem says that if a plus bi is a zero, then a minus bi is also a zero. And that kind of makes sense. Uh, you've solved enough equations by now to know that when you get complex solutions, they always come in that plus or minus form because of how complex solutions are generated. Um, so back to our problem, we're given a 1 half and a 1 plus i. Even though it's not stated, it's assumed that we know also to include the 1 minus i. So we want to create a polynomial with these three zeros. So again, we're just going to follow the last example backwards. Uh, I'm going to have x equals 1 half as a 0, x equals 1 plus i, and x equals 1 minus i as a 0. So now we'll move everything over so that each is set equal to 0. Um, a little bit of foreshadowing here. The, the instructions do say integer coefficients. So while I could say x minus 1 half equals 0, um, knowing where we're going here in a few minutes, uh, it makes more sense to actually say 2x minus 1 equals 0, uh, which will give us the integer coefficients we're looking for. Um, the other ones say that x minus 1 minus i equals 0, and x minus 1 plus i equals 0. Now we'll take these and multiply. The 2x minus 1, the x minus 1 minus i, and the x minus 1 plus i. Still set equal to 0. Now, when we multiply this out, it looks a lot worse than it is. Now, I'm actually going to group like this so that when I look at these two factors, these are actually conjugates of one another. So I'll leave the 2x minus 1 alone out there. And when I multiply the two underlined um, factors, I get an x minus 1 squared, and then the outer and the inner will zero out because they're conjugates. Um, and then I'll have a minus i squared there at the end. So 
it cleans up quite nicely. We have an x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then the minus i squared. Well, i squared we know equals negative 1. So that would just be another plus 1 that sits over there. So let me clean it up just a little bit here. That will be a plus 2. Uh, and at which point now we're ready just to take the binomial times the trinomial. Uh, and I am running out of room here a little bit, so uh, assuming you can multiply a binomial with a trinomial, uh, our final answer should be 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x minus 2. And so that would be the polynomial that has roots 1 half, 1 plus i, and because of the conjugate Paris theorem, 1 minus i. Uh, and we'll go even back a little further. Uh, remember, the nth root theorem says that a degree 3 polynomial should have three solutions. And that's exactly what we have.